Hello folks, my name is Hippocrisite and welcome to yet another episode of my Hearts of Iron 4 campaign in TNO as Magadan, uh, Magadan's, uh, well, Mitchell's Werewolf Magadan, whatever, <laughs> Mitchell Werewolf's Magadan, M Mitchell Werewolf's Magadan, that's the uh, grammatically correct version. So, uh, I haven't been recording for a long time, mainly uh, because I have had some stuff to do and uh, most of the videos, well, all of those videos that you've uh, already seen were pre-recorded and uh, I may be a bit rusty when it comes to language, when it comes to uh, commentary, but I will do my best. Um, also, I have uh, found my uh, pop filter and now probably should, well, my voice should probably uh, sound more naturally. Also, um, I remember that I said uh, that uh, we should be uh, wrapping up this uh, campaign as uh, the toolbox theory uh, were due to to release and now because all of uh, this uh, shitstorm that happened uh, now uh, TNO has a bit of a um, pause and especially when it comes to you know the change of uh, of management so uh, I hope that uh, this time I will be able to uh, record more and record well faster or something like that i have no idea but let's hope that uh, we will be able to finish uh, this campaign before any major update so without further ado let's get started uh, we have unlocked a new focus tree but without uh, getting this one we won't be able to do anything so in the land of fortune and glory. No one quite expected that a mere merc mercenary commander could have uh, could take over a significant stretch of Russia. Not even the intelligence experts in Langley and Washington could have predicted the chain of ev uh, the chain of events that had led to Werbel's success in the Far East, triumphing over all the other traditional powers of the area, the fascists, communists, and the father in the north. He has arrived at a position to establish a new kind of state, a haven for mercenaries, the ruthless citizens of the world, rendered useless by the lack of conflicts. No longer shall uh, these concerns plague them, for all who lack work the Republic of West Alaska shall provide, the disenfranchised, the, be the betrayed, or the disillusioned shall again find refuge beneath the light of liberty. Or light of liberty. Welcome to West Alaska, gentlemen. We have work to do. This will unlock a government of personalities, decisions, and access to the economy, military, and diplomacy focus trees. Cool. One last goodbye. She stood at the pier of Magadan's port, looking out at the early dawn sun as it cracked through the dark, overcast clouds, brushing the cold seas with bubbling colors. In her lips was a cigarette, whose crackle uh, the briny sea ward wind stole though the sweet smell of tobacco never went, never went away. She shivered in her fur coat, a gift from a friend, or is it a former friend? And her breaths came in gusts of white and grey, as trembling fingers plucked the cigarette from its place. The pavement clicked beside her, and she reflexively reached for her ulcer. Nothing was there, much less a gun. Old habits die hard. She eased up taking in the full figure of her friend. Or is it a former friend? He reeked of whiskey, although he tried his best to mask the other beneath a layer of perfume. Strange, she did not recall him doing anything of the sort, not least to someone he disagreed with. Maybe he was still a friend. Taking up her voice above the volume of the waves, she started to speak, her tone tempered by the arguments they had. You seem different today, she said. Was the occasion. He greeted her with a smirk. I don't know, he said, pretending to take offense. I was going to say goodbye to a friend. She's leaving today. 
She smiled, trying to hold back her laughter. What's she like, this friend of yours? Were you close? She's like family to me. I was going to give her this. He tapped at the wooden box in his hands. I was hoping that you can pass it to her. What does she look like? You will know her when you see her. He, bended her, he handed her the box. There is something in there. A real antique. Don't lose it. Before she could reply, he had started walking away. Goodbye, she shouted at the top of her voice. The waves and the wind stole the reply. Goodbye. And it will replace Nancy Wake with Gordon Ingram. So, um, uh, Ingram was uh, IRL, an associate of Werbel, and uh, he was the creator of uh, Mac, Mac 10 or something like that. I can't remember the full name of, of this uh, gun. Well, it, it was a submachine gun, something like Uzi. All right, so the focus is completed and now we can do whatever we like. But uh, probably um, before we uh, do anything, I think that we should take a look at uh, those trees, so this one is clearly the political one. This is clearly the economic one. This one is uh, of military, and this is the exterior affairs, foreign affairs. So maybe before we begin, let's before we go any any further down those trees. Uh, let's go with this one and go with Govern like a Cincinnatus because that's what we wanted to do from the beginning. Well, that's what I... That I didn't know I want to do in the beginning, but then uh, some of my viewers told me that there is a path like this, so let's go with the Cincinnatus, okay? <laughs> so let's enforce the constitution. The Republic of West Alaska would be no country for its citizens if it did not have its constitution. Largely modeled on the American system, it gives rights to both types of the citizenry, the foreign merc mercenaries and the locals. On these pillars, the Republic establishes itself, for without either, it would suffer a phantom pain. <laughs> okay. And no prosthetic can replace the limbs comprised of the human masses. Like the left and right hands, it needs to work together to achieve our collective goal. As such, a constitution is necessary. With the president's foresight, the nation has drafted one. There is only one way to go. Enforcement. The army shall authorize the deployment of military police officers to break off disputes between mercenary and civilian groups. In addition, Werbel shall give prominent positions to collaborators that have agreed to join our cause. Hoo-wee, what is this? A government of personalities. West Alaska has a unique style of government. Wearables, outsider nature and, had, and connections to America have allowed him to have a broad field of ministers to help him administer the Republic. These range from CIA contacts, mercenary buddies, collaborationist Russians and local politicians. However, the president must be weary, wary on who is present in his cabinet, for some sides may grow envious at the other's power if not placated. Uh, so, um, I think that we should uh, kinda mm, be on the center of this triangle, because probably if we uh, drag too hard on mercenaries, the collaborators and the locals will be um, feeling threat threatened or something like that. Um, and uh, okay, we can appoint people. Ah, all right. So okay, okay. So Gordon Ingram, Ingram is our head of government, as well as Ber Bernardo de Torres, Serge Obolensky, and Chiaki Ikeda. And we may appoint Boris Pash for the security minister instead of Chiaki Ikeda 
but I think it's not necessary. And the military connections, so... This one will give us division speed and division attack plus 5%, and he is security minister. Uh, are all of these security ministers? No, this one is the head of government. I would really like to go with Hemming, but... Uh, uh, I kind of like the research speed plus 2.5%. These are all uh, security ministers. Only we can have uh, uh, head of government from collaborators. Uh, what Ingram gives us? Military factory and civilian factory construction speed. Probably it would be a good idea to go with uh, Jacqueli or okay so these are foreign ministers uh, this one is the head of government and those are security oh here is the oh okay so here he, those are actually um fuck I forgot the, the word uh, active. Okay. So probably let's uh, keep it the way it is. Because I don't feel like uh, uh, doing stuff with it. But uh, I forgot that uh, we have the reunification of Russia thing. So let's go with it. We entrenched the control of Siberia and we have changed our name to United States of Siberia. In the far eastern reaches of Russia, something unthinkable has happened. The legendary Mitchell Livington Wer Livingston Werbel III, leader of a mercenary outfit, has gained control over the vast swaths of a region with size that rivals Canada's. Originally seeking a haven for veterans and soldiers frustrated and alienated by the treatment across the world, he found himself to be the service of Mikhail Matkovsky. From there, he turned against his former employer, establishing a place where soldiers could feel at home. Luck may have uh, been responsible for his success thus far, but his ideas will require more than fortune's favored succeed. If the rumors are true, Werbel does not plan on stopping in the Far East. Perhaps it may be time for Russia, not led by politicians or scientists, but by instead, uh, but instead by those who give their lives to defend it. What a thrill! Okay, so uh, we have the uh, entrenched, uh, the, uh, overextended uh, administration. But we also have regional development. Uh, okay, so we don't have raiding and looting until uh, from from now on. The new industrial equipment that I have uh, chosen is still active, so that's cool. Also, world development is not uh, is not going anywhere. But we have the regional development. Um, the popularity of radical ideologies shall decrease, so probably it's fascism, despotism, and and the rest. Denikin? Okay. Uh, and I have no idea what to choose now. Mm. Yeah, well, maybe let's encourage political thought for now. This one will increase our GDP. Oh yeah, I forgot that we have economy now. So maybe uh, poverty rate. Let's go. Let's uh, do something with the poverty rate. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, okay, maybe let's build something because we need this sweet, sweet cash money. And let's go with uh, investing in construction and. Uh, Improve worker training and maybe encourage expatriates. Cool. We have some free military factories uh, and we kind of... Well, let's go with uh, motorized. 
We have some free dockyards. That is not of concern. And we have a new um, slot here. So let's go with improved anti-tank equipment. Let's also um, train some more. Uh, all right. For now, what do we have here? Uh, we have National Neopolchenie and some mercenary infantry. Um, that is, uh, well, kinda useless. We have some motorized here. Uh huh. Mercenary motorized. This one is actually pretty good. So maybe let's change it to. Uh, mercenary motorized. We have no motorized equipment available. But who cares? Um, let's add some more artillery and some light infantry, maybe. What do we have? Here we have Recon Company, so maybe let's some support artillery. And let's stay with it for now. And let's change this one. So Okay. And we need to train some more. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, let's set with this, and here we go. The man of a thousand lives. Roger F Folke? Folkes? I have no idea how it's pronounced. Felt the creak of the wooden docks as he stepped off the boat, stumbling a bit as he adjusted to being on land. Seagulls cried far above the port city of Magadan, a place far from anywhere he'd ever set foot. As he walked along the docks, shuffling in between crowds of travelers, sailors and dock workers, he felt old wounds ache. The bullet in his foot he caught fighting for his country against the crowds. The scars and bullet wounds from his time roving in Algeria. The bullet in his other foot. His chest and his shoulder uh, he caught fighting for the crowds or some other sordid power with enough money to convince the old soldier to bleed again in some hellhole in the depths of Africa for some few Reichsmarks and a lifetime of dull pain. The bullet that never left his right leg after his uh, stint in the Italian Middle East giving him a painful but difficult to notice limp. A thousand other skirmishes lingered in his memory, but left no mark like that on those years in North Africa, Central Africa and the Middle East. Still, Roger was only slightly less able than he used to be, a fact that impressed his employers and drew, his, uh, drew him fame and renown. The man of a thousand lives they called him. So, when Roger heard the state in Russia was hiring mercenaries and so many people he had fought alongside Flee to once again li uh, live the daring life of a hired gun, he decided to give it a shot. It was an odd feeling, walking the streets of Magadan as he searched for barracks, a hiring office, anywhere he could find a job. It felt less like he was looking for another place to work and more like he was looking for a place to belong. Certainly his career was storied, but uh, he was for once a place he was for once in a place filled to the brim with men like him. They all had a certain look, a look he found in abundance in a crowd of men ahead of him, circled around some building whose signs he could not make out. It did look like the place for Roger to be, though, so he set forward. A thousand and more now. Unlock Soger Folke, Folkes, as a minister, and he becomes a general. Oh no, no, not Poland, please. Mm. It's 1965 and the Austrian painter is still not dead. 
is that something that we should uh, be worried about? Because he has no focuses. Spell is still not in control. There is no uh, Ostland war. Well, probably this won't concern us as uh, uh, we are in Siberia and we don't have the um, you know, Luftwaffe terror bombings uh, um, spirit. But it is kind of worrying. Mm-hmm. Yep. The Luftwaffe have never stopped the bombings. But Ostsysolsk and Samara are still fighting and they are still able to fight. Alright, so they don't have to wait for the terror bombings to end? Uh, okay. Well, wait, wait. They have the bombings now. Active. Alright, I have no idea what the hell is going on. Okay, so the constitution is enforced, probably. So uh, let's go with co-opting the bureaucracy. When Werbel won this land from the tyrants that proclaimed their love for, of authoritarian ideolo ideologies, he discovered that each of these statelets had its bureaucracy. The, com the communists and fascists through uh, their obsession with order has left us with a treasure trove of bureaucratic devices with which uh, to manage their nations. It would be a shame to let all of it go to waste, would it not? In a land where the Republic has no allies, it must find some, and, failing that, make some. To survive, one must concede. Though the fascists, Nazis and the pinko communist lapdogs are still loyal to their respective ideologies, the president does not expect that the current arrangement would last long. Once we are firm, we can let go of these sympathizers and usher in our own loyalists. Caffeine flow. Luxuries such as tea and coffee were once rare commodities during the chaos of the late 50s and the early 60s, only available to those with both money and connections and utterly out of reach for most of the population. However, as Russia stabilized, access to the global economy has drastically improved, and now once rare commodities are being imported in increasingly large amounts, chocolate, fruits, foreign wines, and of course coffee and tea. Now access to the caffeinated beverages is no longer a luxury restricted by the privilege restricted to the privileged few, but an increasingly common, if still pricey, drink of choice for many of our citizens. A toast to our future success. A toast. Let's drink some tea. Squad patrol. So I was thinking. Surgeon Python Jack mulled the medic's question over as he kept watch ahead of the makeshift camp. Pitch black midnight shifts and idle chatter never led anywhere good. Then again, you're always thinking. Seon. But granted. Well, drawed Seon K. Jungwa. Uh, sorry if I butchered it. On his cot. Doesn't all this sound like the silver screens? Bunch of mercs flock into a, uh, into a land of warlords take things into their own hands and carve a place to call their own. All you need is John Wayne, John Fontaine, a hackneyed romance plot and he clapped. Bam! Blockbuster of the year. Across K and, Kaz and Kazimierz Kas Młynarz, Ember and Spark uh, glinted off rimmed sunglasses seemingly fused to the support gunner's head. Across K sat, sorry, not set. Like boss said, K. Keep Hollywood in Hollywood, unless we are living in a fever dream of yours. West Alaska is our home now. One by and for one by and for those without. Boss this, boss that, bah. Say something yourself for a change, K retorted. And I, and I am not uh, the one who dresses up like a cowboy and twirls his pistols around. That's Baldy. He pointed at Adam Shashka Abramov. Who was twirling the 
<laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't see the Shashka coming. Okay, let's let's um, let's do it once again. He pointed at Adam Shoshka Abramov, who was twirling revolvers in each hand. Mark of a good do mark of a good taste, my Korean friend. It say a lot more about you than me. Chasseur, if you can educate the young virgin on woman's wants. Chasseur Mir Miriel whistled twice as the silent sniper fed uh, around to the to her scoped MAS 60, uh, 36. Someone was close. Before the conversation fully died, Jack leveled his rifle at rusting bushes where the clearing met trees. Thunder split the air twice, and a body hit snow with a soft, distant thud. Ten more emerged with brandished guns. Fancy shooting pie, said Kay right before lead filled the empty night. Um, we will raise a special activities unit, but who was... but where? Ah, okay, so they, they they were attacked. Okay, that's that's what I understand. And what is this special activities unit? Okay, so these are uh, the the elite. Huh. Well, it is an elite infantry. Okay, let's uh, give them. Uh, a special um, a special army can I train them? well I can but we can train at most 100k uh, men ok so the so we have co-opted the bureaucracy uh, where is the uh, overextended administration ok here so Will we do something now? Um, can I spend more on construction? Ah, oh, no, I don't have the political power. Okay. Okay, so now let's go with Hotline America. Although Werbel would like to view his establishment as a strictly independent endeavor, the big wigs in Washington do not see it that way. Uh, through Werbel's old OSS colleague and friend, John Sing Singlau. Uh, they have established oversight of his government, monitoring his every political move, trying to shake him out. He, is he a loyalist? A patriot? Is he a mercenary out for his own gain? None can say at that stage. What is clear, however, is the Republic's dependency on American arms. Inevitably, we require contact with, lab with Lady Liberty, to spread the light of freedom. Though the government must tolerate her prying eyes, her watch does not confer all on, does not confer only discomfort. The soldiers of the Republic require weapons and the factories of the United States can be better used to support its sister republic across the Bering Strait. We will establish a hotline that connects us directly to the American government. That way we can always ring whenever things go south. Eyes and ears of America. And then, and then, we found him face down in the goddamn mud with his pants down to his ankles. Singlaup laughed like a hyena, his old friend Werbel's familiar laugh echoing back at him from the telephone receiver. Werbel had given him a call to discuss business, something about Eastern Russia or Western Alaska or something. But it had quickly devolved into banter and storytelling about their old days in the OSS. God, I don't even remember that. Must have been some opium, cackled Werbel before continuing. Anyways, let's get down to business, old friend. I hear you are still working with the feds back in the States. Yeah, yeah, the Central Intelligence Agency. Right, still not as great as the OSS, but that doesn't matter. That's why I called you, on top of the personal stuff. What do you mean? See, I'd like to make a deal with you and the CIA back in the States. You ship us some guns, bullets and whatnot, and we look out for you boys here in Russia keep you and the CIA updated on the situation here at all. Well, I'd have to run it by the deputy director, but I'm sure I can pull it off. Expect a call from uh, the higher-ups at some point to make sure everything is, everything's all set. 
but I think I can call in a few favors. Good talking to you, Mitch. You too, John. Unlocks our relationship with Uncle Sam decisions. Let's check it. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, that's the support, support thing. Uh, yet again. Okay. Alright, but before we go further, I mean the, the next uh, focus is let's go just with a governed like a Cincinnati because um, I think, or maybe, yeah, well, probably that's a, bit, that's a better idea, uh, at least in this episode or in the uh, following one, probably. <laughs> We will go with this path, and uh, next we will go down the others, I think. So let's go with Govern like a Cincinnatus. As president, many of the local uh, civilians have accused Werewolf of dictatorial tendencies, painting him as a Caesar who does not uh, have the best interests of the people in his mind. It is hogwash. Werbel is a descendant of white Russian officer who fought in the Russian Civil War. He has much in common with the populace and is only here to bring order to the, his ravaged homeland. Would it not elate and uplift his, uh, the heart of a patriot to see his home country soar again among the powers of this world? That is Werbel's purpose. Though many uh, may condemn his rule as tyrannical, he is not here to dictate. He is here to rule. Whether they like it or not, the Russians of West Alaska are his subjects, and he looks after them. Perhaps in the distant future, Werbel might step down and allow a worthier Russian to take his place as the president of the Republic. Okay, so we will get uh, the recruitable population factors some stability and replace one party state with controlled opposition. So what's the change actually? Mm. Okay, so... Uh, there is almost no ideology drift. Daily political power plus 15. Point 15. Okay, so we'll just get more stability. Oh, that's fine, I guess. Mr. President, there has been some unfortunate news from our western border. It appears that one of our ranking mercenaries, uh, John Peters, has been involved in an altercation with a local politician over procurement of housing for his unit. Said altercation has ended with the death of the politician involved to multiple stab wounds, with Peters stating that, and I quote, the fucker deserved it for being a pretentious ass. While owing to his senior status, Peters has managed to escape punishment, our relations with the local population has have noticeably worsened. God damn it. Minus seven and... 50 base stability. That's a great, really great uh, hit. All right, so uh, the focus is completed. Uh, and uh, we have three uh, ways to go. Liberalism by necessity, integrating the NKVD, or make use of the black shirts. So basically, uh, we may use uh, the communists or fascists uh, uh, militia. So let's see what would be better. Um, it will both uh, change our police with security service, but we will get other popularities and other ministers. So here we will get Gurgen and Serians and Genrik Lushkov. And here we will get Yuri Vivitsky and Georgi Shirekev. Shekhelev, sorry. But I think that we have still a lot of uh, NS shit here. And uh, as I hate it to s as I hate to say this, I think that uh, it would be better to go with NKVD. When one speaks of the NKVD to the Russian locals, the surest reaction that it will elicit is a groan. Infamous for their authoritarian practices to keep order and conformity towards the communist orthodoxy, they might be a tool through uh, which Werbel and his republic may hold dissent. The president himself is not a communist, but in these wastes none, no one can afford to be dogmatic. 
An alternative would be using the Russian fascist thugs. However, if there is anything the local despises more than they if there is anything the local despises more than the NKVD, it's uh, it is the RFP. Well, that's what I that's what I thought. Should Werbel decide to integrate the NKVD, the Republic shall retrain them to be a vital asset of the state. They will be given police ranks and the duty of keeping the rear guard while Werbel soldiers fight in the front lines. The NKVD, however, it is although it is brutal, is a lesser evil compared compared to the RFP. Werbel is a mercenary. He is he is in the business of choosing lesser evils. Yeah. We have some units to deploy, so uh, let's uh, get them down here already. It's 14. Uh, those will probably be just for, uh, you know, keeping the front lines uh, intact. Uh, because I don't think that uh, I will be able to, you know, push with them uh, with all their force. Mm, but I hope that I won't be. Uh, it won't be necessary because mm, the Siberian Federation and our United States of Siberia are both authoritarian democracies. So maybe, just maybe, we will be able to, um, you know, annex them diplomatically. Okay, so the focus is completed, and we have our event. Alliances of Convenience. Gurgen Aserians could see his frozen breath leave his mouth in a halting, shaky rhythm as he lay on the ice-cold cellar floor. He'd been hiding for a while. He wasn't quite sure how long after the Supreme Soviet fell to Magadan's dogs. He wasn't an idiot. He could see the writing on the wall. A, communist's, a communist and an AK NKVD agent? There wasn't a chance he'd survive here. So, like, like some manner of vermin, he had hit. For so long, that, for so long, that is, until he heard boots crunching snow outside of the cabin he had fought, found refuge in. How could they have found him? He thought to himself, hearing the steps come closer and closer to the cellar doors. There was definitely more than one person coming, he thought. He was sure of it. Before he knew it, the darkness of the basement was pierced by daylight, as the doors were thrown open with a full creak. With a dull creak, sorry. Gilgen froze, shutting his eyes tight. Gilgen Ayas assailants spoke a voice from somewhere he could not see. Slowly he opened his eyes, pressing his numb hands onto the ground to push himself into a sitting position. Uh, not quite sure you can hear me, but we have an offer for you. Shivering, Gilgen replied. Who, who the hell is we? United States of Siberia. You could use men of your particular peacekeeping talents. Still cold? Uh, Girgen raised an eyebrow at the name, but ultimately opted to disregard it, its absurdity. Better than freezing to death in a dusty basement. Very well, why me? We've recruited a number of ex NKVD agents. We could use one more. Besides your friend uh, here with me, Genrik Ilyushkov uh, gave you a stellar recommendation. Gurgen sat up, grinning at the name of his old comrade. He limped with stiff legs over to the steps and climbed out of the basement, into the light of day. Back to work. Let's go with liberalism by necessity. Although it is unfortunate, it must be admitted that the situation in Russia does not permit the political freedoms that Americans enjoy. Although Werbel's heart bleeds for Russians, for his cause to triumph he must rally Russians from all the political classes behind him. He can allow no dissent, no gap in his resolve to save Russia from the destitution within which she now finds herself. It is a pragmatic solution. When Werbel's term as a dictator expires, the Republic shall put its utmost effort towards the expansion of this freedom. However, for now, a certain amount of political curtailment is necessary. Wearable states, state agencies shall scan through newspapers, radio broadcasts and media that the Russian people consume to find any sign of displeasure in the rebellion. Only through control and restraint can peace find her way into Russia again. Alright, so the focus is completed. 
Bearers of bad news. Dmitri swore under his breath as he stared out the window of his humble little newspaper office. A police car had parked across the street, and the man in the front seat was repeatedly glancing at his storefront in between snippets of conversation with his partner. Even as typewriters clacked and presses did their work behind him, he stood silent as he watched their every, every action. After what felt like ages, the cops finished their talking and uh, filed out of their car. Dmitri's heart fell into his stomach as he watched them begin walking towards his door. The bell jingled as, he, as the police officers entered the building. Dmitri put on a fake smile and turned to them. What seems to be the problem, officers? Did you publish this? Spoke the man in front, holding out a newspaper with, all, with an all too familiar headline. Thousands of troops without pension due to frighteningly incompetent new policy. But what was more damning was the line right above it. The Magadan Eye. Dmitri's newspaper. Yes, but shut it down by the order of President Werbel. Ask. But I... Do you want me to force you? Because that can be arranged. Dmitri sighed. No. Good, we have 24 hours to close this whole operation. Or me and my partner will make, an will make another visit. As the officers left the building, Dmitri sighed and began walking into the back room where his staff worked, ready to deliver the bad news. The truth silenced. Well, that wasn't good, but probably uh, the executive orders were really worse. Okay, so now we have two things. Uh, we may go with the carrot and the stick or a velvet iron glove, velvet gloved iron fist. Okay, so this one will change pensions and this one will change the minimum wage. This one will also give us uh, authoritarian democracy change in popularity and this one will not give us any change in popularity. So I think that probably the better thing to take at least now is that the carrot and the stick because this one is kind of like uh, Oh, we are we are fine, but uh, if you do anything uh, and you step out of the line, then you will get fucked. Maybe let's go with the carrot and the stick. In a region with so many ethnic and cultural variations as the Far East, flexibility is the key. Werbel's previous decisions have rendered this path open to him. The carrot or the stick, the Far Eastern people are free to follow our directives or to disobey them. If they choose the former, we shall reward them and promote them as their deeds have seen uh, them fit. If they choose the latter, then they shall be liable to punishment within the criminal code. Above all, the government shall attempt to distance the itself from the civilian population. Using the previously appointed police forces, we shall enact punishment. The Republic's civilian bodies shall reward those that perform their duties with exceptional skill. Never say that Werbel is an ungrateful man. He rewards those who deserve it and punishes those that have been failing. Uh, I think that to um, sway our our locals into more, you know, um, central position, maybe let's appoint uh, Igor Kovalchuk Koval, or no, maybe uh, Valentin Abramov. He is the economy minister and he will give us some uh, production efficiency bonuses and infrastructure construction speed. Okay, so the focus is completed, and now let's read. The two faces of West Alaska. Arsenly sucked air in... Arsenly? Arseni? That's I or L. Probably Arseni. Sucked air in through his thief as he yanked his hand uh, away from the blast furnace. Through the boiling heat inside the steel mill and the clutter of hammers and other instruments at work, he had not been wearing one of his protective gloves. Now the skin on his palm, not protected, was red, blotchy and swollen, not to mention throbbing with pain. Staggering back away from the furnace and nearly tripping over the man behind him, he caught the eye of one of the supervisors that, supervisors that had uh, been assigned to the mill days ago. Wincing through the pain, he watched the supervisor approach him and roughly address him. What the hell are you doing? Sir, I... 
I don't want to hear it. We can't have reckless bastards in here hurling themselves by touching a hot furnace. Sir, my glove was... Your glove was what? Are you uh, accusing our company of not providing adequate equipment? No, sir. Good. Let's go to a clinic and don't expect any pay for the hours you'll be gone. With that conversation over and Arseni shuffling out of the building, the supervisor approached another man who had been informed was doing exceptional work. For a few minutes he watched him effortlessly working away at a white hot ingot, waiting for the man to take a break. The worker turned around to the face of supervisor, his face twisting into a worried grimace. Did I do something wrong? No, no. How would you like a raise on the next few hours of your salary? The stick isn't always the most discerning tool. Well, I think that this was the best thing to choose. Okay, so uh, actually I am uh, recording for an hour now, so maybe let's uh, end it here. Uh, we have uh, went almost through the, well, through the most of the tree here. Um, the rest of the completion time is 25 days, so uh, at least half a year, almost half a year will, uh, or no, maybe not even half a year. But yeah, well, whatever. Probably we will, uh, in the next episode, we will do the rest of this tree and, I don't know, maybe let's go with uh, um, the question of recognition. Probably it would be best if we want to, um, you know, go with the peace talks. I mean, unification talks, because uh, the Central Siberian Federation is authoritarian democratic, we are authoritarian democratic, and, well, we'll, we'll see. What the fuck is going on here? Jeez, this one's ugly as hell. <laughs> uh, all right, so, uh, without further ado, let's end this episode. Uh, be sure to leave a like, to comment, and to subscribe to my channel if you've liked this uh, episode and if you want to see more and be sure to check out my patreon it's uh, the link is down in, this, in the description and i will see you guys in the next one see ya